Uh, we've got Mark Tashira here, who is uh, graduating from the Georgia Institute of Technology this weekend. And uh, Mark, if you just want to go ahead and start us off with a couple quick thoughts on uh, graduating and uh, kind of the culmination of your uh, academic career here. Yeah, uh, thanks, Andrew. You know, uh, Georgia Tech has always been a special place for me. Um, you know, I signed my letter of intent in the fall of 1997. So it's been a 25 year journey for me and it's a special place for my family. I met my wife here. Um, you know, we have three beautiful children that uh, have, have parents that will now both have been graduates uh, of Georgia Tech. And to, uh, to be able to say I'm a Georgia Tech graduate now after 25 years, it's, um, you know, it's something I really can't put into words. I'll try my best as I, as I answer your questions, but it's, it's, a, uh, it's a special time for me and, and I'm proud to be a Yellow Jacket and uh, proud to represent Georgia Tech and what it's meant for me and my family. You know, I can't say enough great things about this place. Go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, if you guys can use the raise hand function with, within Zoom, we'll uh, call on everybody individually, beginning with uh, Zach Klein. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Tex, it's good seeing you, brother. I mean, listen, you got the, the, all the uh, professional accolades, the World Series, the All-Stars, the cash in the bank. Um, why'd you need to do this? I didn't need to do it. Uh, I really didn't. But it, it was something that I always, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to finish my degree. But, you know, with, with me being on the road during my career, it was never going to happen while I played. And I jumped right into ESPN. Uh, which took up a lot of time and was a lot of fun and, and it was busy. What, what really happened was the, the convergence of COVID allowing for some remote learning and kind of an online class, you know, being able to take classes online. And then, you know, when we sold, you know, many of you know that I'm, I'm very involved in real estate here in Atlanta. When we sold the Corey Arts project to Microsoft, I all of a sudden had a lot of free time. And I'm not somebody that likes to sit around. And so between the quarry yard sale, the, the COVID being able to, you know, to take some classes online, it was a now or never for me. And I, I jumped in. I, I talked to Dr. Cabrera, told him my plans. Uh, we worked out a deal with the, the business school that, that I could be online the first semester and then be half online, half in class the rest of the way and got it done. So just something I wanted to finish. I wanted my kids to, to, to know that I finished. And I'm just, I'm super proud of being able to, to say that I'm a Georgia Tech graduate now, because I've always said I'm an alum. And it, it was, it was weird saying that because I don't have my degree from Georgia Tech, but uh, once Saturday hits, I'll be able to say I'm a graduate. And just a quick follow-up on that. When you were in class in person, uh, kids have any clue who you were? Or you were just another one of the, the many people on campus. So it was, my first semester online, I would get emails or like direct messages, you know, dur during the blue jeans chats, is this Mark to share the baseball player? And so a handful of kids, whether they grew up watching baseball or, or it's almost depressing to say their parents were, uh, you know, fans of mine, uh, they reached out. And then slowly as word got around uh, Scheller College of Business that I was coming back getting my degree, by the time, you know, yeah, I sit in class now and everyone knows who I am and they come up to me and I've been doing some mentoring with, with kids and trying to spend time with them. It's been a neat experience. We'll go now to a question from Rod McKenzie. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, Mark, you, you've been in sort of a different type of situation going to class, but you've also played a, a huge role in the, the de development and the upgrade of the, of the baseball facilities. Uh, how cool has it been for you to stand up there on to share a terrace and watch baseball games? Unbelievable. You know, there, there's a lot of things that you do in your life that you never get to enjoy after the fact, you know, being able to see. So I played in the old Russ Chandler Stadium. We called it the Rusty Sea. Being able to see the, the evolution of the new stadium and then the improvements of the new stadium and now sit with classmates and professors and, you know, fellow board members. I'm on two boards here at Georgia Tech to sit uh, in the Teixeira Skyline Terrace and watch the Yellow Jackets play baseball on a beautiful spring night and with the skyline. And it's, uh, it's a little bit surreal, but, you know, I'm young. My kids are young. We're going to be watching games there for a long time. Go to a question now from Kelly Quinlan. Go ahead, Kelly. 
Mark, you've been really good at uh, um, being engaged, uh, you know, despite uh, not, you know, just now finishing school and everything, but you've always been engaged with Georgia Tech and a lot of other former student athletes are not. Do you feel like that, is there something you see there? Is that an opportunity maybe you would like to help get guys re-engaged with the school and that kind of thing? I would love to. You know, everyone has a different experience in college, you know, and, and my experience was unique in that, like I said, I met my wife here at Georgia Tech. She's a graduate. Her twin brother was at school with us at the same time. So it's, it's much more part of our family than probably a lot of other folks. And then I got a chance to come play for the Braves. And when I was playing for the Braves in 2007, 2008, I started making some real estate connections and getting involved in real estate in Atlanta. So, it, you know, Atlanta has always been a second home for me, but because of the family connections, the business connections, um, I think it's probably just more a part of, of my life. I mean, it's, it really is a huge part of who I am. And I would just tell every student athlete, you know, make an effort, make an effort to make it be a part of your life because uh, it's an exceptional place. And, and there is, there's no downside, right? Spending time you know, back on campus, whether it's mentoring kids, giving back financially, just going to the games. I mean, you know, alumni and students love seeing ex players at games, whether that's a football game or a volleyball match, you know? I, so I, I just think that it's, it's, it's very rewarding and I encourage all student athletes to come back and be involved. Go to a question now from Nathan Makaborski. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Tex. Good to see you. I hope uh, you and the family are all doing well. Good to see you, um, Nathan. Likewise. Um, so I just was curious about, like, you know, how many how how many credits did you need to complete your degree? How close were you? And you know, Georgia Tech has such a reputation as being a very tough academic school. What was What's well, the biggest challenge? You guys probably don't have enough time in the day to talk about the academic challenges. Georgia Tech is tough. So I had 41 hours left. And um, so basically I left after my junior year, but my last two spring semesters, I only took 12 credits. So I was a little bit behind. Um, yeah, I majored in baseball. Let's be honest. I, I majored in baseball. I minored in business. And the biggest, the toughest part for me was completing all of the prerequisites including the two sciences that I completely punted on uh, my first time here because I was a baseball major and taking, so I took my two lab sciences online and I had, there's a lot of math involved in those classes. I had done advanced mathematics in 20 years and there was a lot of panic. There was, I, I had tutors, you know, so I would sign up online for tutors and my tutor would pop up and they'd be like, are you Mark Teixeira? What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, I need help. I need help because I have no idea what these, you know, equations mean and, you know, trying to trying to figure that out. That was the toughest part. But once I got back onto campus and really got into all of my business, uh, you know, classes on you know, in person, um, I got into a rhythm and, you know, really enjoyed getting to know the professors, getting to know the students. And I think my business experiences over the last 20 years really helped me in those classes. So, I would say the, the computer science and, and the lab sciences were the toughest part. Another question from Zach. Is it, so it's just a graduate in a business degree? Is that what it is? Or, uh, yes, business degree. And I have a, a general management concentration, which is kind of an oxymoron. But I, uh, I realized that you know, I, I will probably never apply for a job in my life. So I wanted to be able to learn about as much as, you know, as Scheller can offer. So I took a few different classes in each vertical and, um, you know, got to take a couple finance classes and a couple leadership classes and some uh, operations courses and you know, strategy courses. And that was a really cool way for me to finish my degree. And you mentioned the real estate endeavors you've been in, you know, while you were playing and even just sort of let you retired. Oh, what, what other business ventures do you want to, are, are you involved in? And then maybe pique your interest that you will begin into in the near future. Yeah. So, so spending the last 12 years in the New York area, um, I just recently moved to Austin, Texas last year, but the last 12 years, I got to meet some really interesting people in private equity and venture capital. And so I've done some, some investments and been a part of some startup companies. They take a lot of time. And so what I've, I've really focused on is allocating capital to really smart people in private equity and venture. And then, you know, my, the real estate, I love, I love being outside. I love walking sites. I love, you know, looking at maps and, and talking about architectural plans. 
So I'm going to stay really involved. We're, we have um, a bunch of projects that will probably be coming online soon on the on the backs of Microsoft building their new campus on the west side. So I'll, I'll still be in Atlanta a, a ton with all of my real estate projects. And then, you know, obviously being on two boards and plenty of committees inside of those boards. Georgia Tech keeps me busy. Got a question from Ken Segura. Go ahead, Ken. Mark, is it correct that you were traveling back and forth for class from, from, from Texas? I was. So I basically, every three or four weeks, I would take the 5.50 a.m. flight from Austin to Atlanta, get here in time for class from Monday through Thursday, and then I would fly back either Thursday evening or, or Friday morning. And I did that every three or four weeks. And in the meantime, the professors knew I wasn't going to be in class, so they'd send me lectures or a lot of, you know, because of COVID, a lot of lectures are now online or they're recorded. So I was able to keep up with, with all of the material. And then when I was in class, that was the time you know, on campus, that was my time to take exams, do group presentations, you know, any type of projects that I needed to be a part of. So there was a lot of travel back and forth. I give, um, I give my wife a lot of credit for, for being patient with me when say, Hey, I'm going back to Atlanta. I'm going back to Atlanta. And, and, you know, she knew how hard it was. Take a question from Rod. Hey, Mark, I know you've, since you left uh, to play professional ball, you've kept in touch with Danny. Uh, since you've been back, have you had any interaction with current players and have you been able to give them any advice on their future? As, as much as they're willing to listen, you know, you know what they say about unsolicited advice, right? Uh, but I saw Danny yesterday. Danny's a good friend of mine and, and I will support the program for, uh, for as long as I'm alive. And, and, you know, he's just, had such a great impact on so many young men, including myself. And I've gotten to sit in class with, with some of his players. Um, I sat next to Kevin Parada in marketing this semester and gave Kevin my number, you know, uh, last, I guess it was two or three weeks ago, uh, right before finals week, slid it over. I said, Kevin, you got it figured out right now, but if you ever need anything, let me know. And, and, you know, I have a feeling that, that he's going to be a top 10 pick in, in the first round this year. And, you know, it'll, be a lot of the situations, a lot of the experiences that I had uh, as a Georgia Tech uh, player and uh, going through the minors and, and you know, hopefully going to the big leagues for Kevin. So uh, if he wants to talk, I'm here for him. Take another question from Kelly. It's interesting you mentioned Kevin. Um, you know, things have changed so dramatically in the last year and a half in the college sports landscape with NIL and that kind of thing. And I know you've been tracking some of it. Kind of what do you – what do you see as Georgia Tech's move there? What do you feel like they need to do to, to take advantage of it? That, that's such a tough question. I am um, I'm very interested to see where NIL lands because as a major leaguer, I knew what my market value was to businesses, companies, brands in professional sports. What we're seeing in NIL is not market value value is not you know it's become a recruiting tool it's become a you know how do I keep my players from transferring and there's going to be some shakeout uh, what I'm proud about Georgia Tech I'm on the GTA board on the foundation board so we have these conversations I mean almost every day I'm proud that we you know uh, we're going to play by the rules as we always have we're not going to do anything that would damage the Georgia Tech brand that being said we need to support student athletes that do have opportunities and if you have opportunities to, to make you know, some money uh, on your name, image, and likeness, that's great. Uh, but I hope college sports doesn't turn into, let's get all the alumni together and you know, try to buy the best recruiting class, regardless of the sport, you know, uh, because I think that would hurt college athletics, which, which I love. I mean, I, I love watching college basketball, football, and baseball even more than the professional ranks, because the the just the purity of a college student and, you know, you're not making money, you're doing it for your scholarship, you're doing it for your teammates and for the love of the game. And, you know, if you become a professional, the money follows. And I didn't make a dime on NIL when I was in college and I had a blast. And uh, so hopefully it doesn't ruin that experience for these kids. Another question from Ken. Mark, you mentioned your experience with the tutors kind of recognizing, I was curious, were there any kind of funny stories as far as class? Someone recognizing or coming asking for your autograph or whatever it was that was kind of well not maybe out of the ordinary. Oh yeah, I mean there there there's tons of 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 you know interesting cool stories, but um, you know some of them have to do with you know kids coming up to me 
who don't know who I am. You know, maybe they weren't there at the first, the, the first class and they see me and I'm like sitting near them and they're like, what is this guy doing? And then I'll, I'll, you know, stand up and do a presentation about my experiences and like the, the most puzzled looks uh, because they're like, what are you, you're an undergrad. What are you doing here? Who, and then, so you have to tell them, okay, this is who I am. This is what I've done. And it, it all makes sense. And so sometimes that communication was really interesting because I, I remember when I was in school, there were no you know, 42 year olds um, that, that were sitting next to me in class, you know, writing notes by hand, all these other students are, are, you know, popping away at their computers. And I got my, you know, old, old notebook trying to try to take notes by hand. So just, just the interaction with the, the, the day to day interaction with students and having them get to know me was pretty neat. Got time for a few more. We'll go to another question from Zach Klein. Tex, has the competitive edge, uh, has the flame kind of died down? Or does business take over that looking for the next deal? Or is it just like, hey, I'm cool. I've done that. It's now kid time kind of a thing. I, I, was, I was able to turn off that, that competitiveness. And now I'm still a competitive person. I want to win at, at everything I do. But what I try to, because I love playing golf, you know, right? So, so I play golf as much as I can. And guys are always, let's gamble, let's do this, and let this match and that match. I'm like, guys, let's just play golf for fun. You know, so I'm able to turn off the, um, the itch to, to beat everybody, to win at all costs, you know, everything that you got to do, um, that, that's going away. And I just, I enjoy competition now. And, and of course, do I want to do a great business deal? Yeah, but um, I like business deals when both sides win, right? Um, I like, you know, going to play golf and after four hours uh, with a group of guys, you know, having a beer with them and, and telling stories, not being mad at each other because, you know, someone, uh, you know, gave a putt they shouldn't have or, you know, someone, you know, took a, a liberal drop or whatever it might be. I mean, that part of the, the competitive streak in me is, is long gone. And it's, it's nice because it, it burned pretty bright for the first 36 years of my life. All right, next time you're in Atlanta, we'll play golf, beers on me. Great. Sounds good. Another question from Nathan. Mark, uh, I'm sure you've got a nice uh, trophy collection in your home there with your, your gold glove awards and, and, you know, mementos from your baseball career. Uh, will you have a, uh, you know, is there a prominent spot picked out for your diploma? And, and can you like even compare the pride you think you'll have in seeing that piece of paper on the wall with some of the other accolades you've earned in your career? It'll be right up there. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I do have a pretty cool uh, trophy room in my office. And, you know, when, when you when you're a professional baseball player, you get to have a lot of really neat experiences. Not many major leaguers graduate from college. That's, you know, that's just the way it is, the way it's set up. You know, a lot of guys come out of high school or, and, and most others, if you don't come out of high school, you were just like me where you left after your junior year and a lot of guys don't come back because you know, they're in the same situation. You're, you're in your 30s or 40s. You've got a family. You're busy. You know, going back to campus for, for a year or two just isn't in the cards. So that'll be, uh, you know, if you want to call it a trophy, that'll be something that I, I, I'm going to be super proud of. And I'll put it up with my Gold Glove Awards and, um, you know, Silver Sluggers and World Series trophy. Another question from Kim. Mark, was there a class or two or a particular semester where you're like, I, I don't think I want to do this. This is really, really hard and I got other things to do. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a great story. So when I first, when I first signed up, I had an academic, you know, they give you an academic advisor because, because I had, because it was 20 years since I was out of school, a lot of the classes weren't the same. And so prerequisites, so that, you know, the dean of, of the business school, they had to figure out, okay, well, that class kind of counts for this, this credit counts for that to make sure that all of my credits transferred. And so, you know, I talked with an academic advisor and he's like, Hey, Mark, what are you interested in? You know, what do you think you should, should be your concentration? So I said, well, really, I'm an investor right now. That's, that's really what I do. I manage my portfolio uh, and uh, I enjoy real estate. And, but, you know, the, the deal side, the, the, the finance side, they're like, he goes, oh, great. You know, you should be a finance concentration. Fine. So I sign up for all these finance classes in my first semester. I get the syllabus of, of all of these classes. I'm like, huh, this looks like it's a little bit more difficult than, uh, than I had expected. Because at this stage in your business degree, a finance concentration at Georgia Tech is like quant finance. I can barely add, 
<laughs> and so uh, I, I took the first class, you know, it, it was on blue jeans and it's, it's virtual. And I'm like, I don't think I can do this. I, I don't know how to code, you know, um, you know di different programs to pick stocks. So I call, I call up my advisor and it was actually a new advisor because my old one had moved on. And she's like, it's her name is Lindsay Starr. She's like, Mark, you should not have signed up for, <laughs> for finance. So I dropped all those classes and I went to the general management um, uh, route because I, I told my wife, I'm like, honey, I'm going to fail. Like this is, there is no way I'm going to be able to take these finance classes. And uh, I, so I almost quit. I really did. I always said, you know, this is, this is going to be too hard. She's like, relax, um, call your advisor, like, figure something out. This is, you know, um, and so the toughest part was once you sign up for classes that first week, trying to get in to new classes when they're all booked up, that was tough. So I'm like refreshing my, you know, register registration every single hour just to see if, uh, you know, if a spot opens up and uh, that was interesting. That's, I think that's a, a funny story of, uh, you know, sleeping on it a little bit and understanding that there's, there's, you know, ways to make things happen. Thank you. Anything else for Mark? Mark, just real quick, was getting your degree like a promise you had made to your parents or to yourself or something? Like how long ago did you say, I'm going to go back and finish this thing? You know, I never made a promise to, to, to anybody, to myself. Um, I, I had accomplished so much in my baseball career. That was my excuse. That was kind of my get out of jail free card. But as I got older and as you know, my kids got older and I realized that there, it was a now or never experience with, with COVID and you know, this interesting time in, uh, in Georgia Tech's history where they allowed for online learning, you have to take your last 36 hours on campus. And as much as Atlanta has always been my second home, we probably were never going to move back here full time. So I just never thought I was going to do it. But then when the opportunity uh, presented itself, it was like a, a light bulb went off and I said, Mark, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. Let, let's go. And, uh, and, you know, I kind of never looked back after that. How many hours a week do you think you were committing to this? <sighs> you know, so 12 to 15 hours of actual class. The first semester was probably another three or four a day. And then the, the last two semesters, probably two or three a day. So, you know, do that math, probably, you know, 30, 30 hours a week, I would guess. It was, I mean, you know, when people ask me, what, what are you doing right now? I, I'm a full-time student. And that's on top of, you know, three kids and real estate investments and managing my portfolio and being on two nonprofit boards and all these other things that I'm doing. Uh, and also trying to have some fun, you know, I, I grinded for, for 15 years professionally and four years with ESPN, which I really enjoyed, but I wanted to have a little time to myself. So I guess I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. I can't just be sitting down. I have to be working at something. I have to be busy. And, uh, and so now I am after Saturday, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit of time for myself and, uh, and you know, try to figure out the next move. I got one final one for you, man. Higher your GPA or your career batting average? Oh, uh, definitely my GPA. So I'm going to graduate with about a 3.6. I'm not sure exactly how the decimals are going to end up, but if I could have hit 3.60 in my career, man, that would have been <laughs> that would have been nice. Baseball would have been easy. I was joking with Coach Hall yesterday. I think I, I think I hit like 4.12 or uh, something like that in college. And I was like, college baseball was easy. And you get to the big leagues and every single night you're facing, you know, uh, an elite talented pitcher. And, you know, every hit, I, I feel like every hit was a blessing. Every home run was a blessing. And I never expected to have the career that I had. But um, so, so if you ask me what was harder, major leagues or Georgia Tech, and I have to think on it for a while. All right, everybody. Well, uh, Mark, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, thank all of the media for uh, joining us as well, especially those that are uh, tuning in from uh, New York. And uh, Mark, uh, let me be one of many to congratulate you on uh, graduating from uh, Georgia Tech. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. And I uh, hope to see you all soon. Thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Thanks, everyone.